right now it's 3250 exactly at the breakout point right when the breakout from 3250 that was a multi-year high uh usually is retreat so right now the trader is just waiting for you know obvious the news this week of election and the fed so uh so yeah i think it's still very constructive for silver they, they look at silver they think it's cheap and the silver doesn't need so market very small doesn't need a lot of money to make it going so it's very hard to predict exactly the timing, but I see it. The 50, actually 50 is not the, the final target. Hello and welcome back to Soar Financially, a channel where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoffman, I'm the at JR Mining Guy over on X and of course your host of this channel and I'm looking forward to, to welcoming back an old friend of this channel. Someone who's, who's gotten the most comments I think about making him a regular on this channel and it's none other than Chen Lin of Chen, uh, ChenPicks.com and Lin Asset Management. Really looking forward to our discussion because when I had him on last time he said we're going to see $50 silver in June as you know if you look at the dates it's November now and we're sitting only at 3250 roughly right now so we we, we have to follow up on that and uh, re revisit that $50 call and of course since uh, Chen is a, a China China expert we, we have to talk about the Chinese stimulus package and the impact on commodities uh, in general so lots of lots of discuss lots to chew through and uh, before I switch over to my guest quickly please subscribe to the channel hit that like button and leave a comment it helps us out tremendously and it is a free way to support our work here really appreciate it now without much further ado chen it is great to have you on the program it's good to see you again my friend kai so glad to see you yeah it's it's great like it's good to have you back on i think it's an opportune time to chat um but we, we got to rip the band-aid off chen and uh, we we made some headlines uh, back in back in june when we published or back in may when we published our interview and we said fifty dollars silver by june um we, we briefly broke out but silver retreated so uh where are we at on the silver trade there chen yeah silver still looks very promising right now it's 3250 exactly at the breakout point right when the breakout from 3250 that was a multi-year high uh usually is retreat so right now the trader is just waiting for you know obvious the news this week uh, election and the fed so uh so yeah i think it's still very constructive for silver uh, and uh, we are you know, I mean, still very exciting time. Uh, silver, I believe silver goes a lot higher. And, uh, you know, it's not May. I guess I was uh, in South June, I was too optimistic uh, because silver tend to rise very sharply and uh, unpredictably. I, I didn't quote exactly it will be, but I say it could be. So, and still it could be, you know, uh, 50 very, very soon because silver is very hard for, to predict. And then you see the history, I show you all the chart. Historically, you see silver, just go up straight up when they go it just go so it could could come after election who knows so mm -hmm. but for investors uh we should know that silver is under heavy deficit for multiple years and this year will be one of the the biggest if uh, one of the big likely the biggest deficit and and then investors just start warming up for silver and especially those people who feel like they missed the run of gold. Yeah, a lot of people told me uh, around the world, tell me, oh, Chen, I missed the run of gold. Gold goes too too far, too expensive. What I do get in, I think they, they look at silver and think it's cheap. And silver doesn't need, so market very small, doesn't need a lot of money to make it going. So it's very hard to predict exactly the timing, but I see it, the 50, actually 50 is not the, the final target. I think it's got much higher than that, but the 50 will hit historical target and then our silver miner will do very well and i also have a silver etf as well future which is very uh, risky business so i don't advise other people to 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 play that if you don't have experience so those are a very good trade and still stick stick on with that no, ab absolutely. No, silver is like the fundamentals. I think are, I think we're all very clear on the fundamentals. You just reiterated it. 500 million ounce uh, deficit in the market, obviously. Um, I, I quickly want to discuss the price action, though, because silver tried to break out. And we, as, as you said, we're right at that breakout point, And it broke out. And it seemingly broke out violently because it jumped up to 3450 rather quickly. But it retraced. Like, why didn't we see any more follow-up buying, Chen? Like, well, what happened? Like, who, who stepped and why did we step on the brakes here? There, there's multiple 
reasons, right? On that weekend, when it first break out, I think I saw quite a few newsletters say, oh, this is it. We, we see $50 by the end of the year. And <laughs> people are talking about $50 again. I, I think it's it's right. They're right. I mean, we could see it. We could see that. Uh, it's 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 basically the, the sentiment right now, just before election, I mean, depending on the election results and people looking at the historically what happened when, you know, one party wins the election, you know, all these um, automatic trading and then there's a uh, all over so that there's some concerns. I mean, people, they always uh, come in and pull back. So there's some uh, sharp pullback on silver. I just had a breaking up point. Historically, they always retest the breakout. So we'll see if uh, if this, this hold and if it's hold where we are up and running again. And also right now, there's some miners that got hit very hard. We talked about just before I came, came up the show, some are down 20, 30%, with absolutely no no reason. <laughs> so it's just like sentiment change. Right? So that there is opportunity for you to buy for those people who are willing to risk here. Yeah. How much of the breakout was uh, can, or can be attributed to the Chinese stimulus package that that pushed silver higher and is now retreating? Like sort of that excitement, as you said, like sentiment has changed again. Like there were there was a bit of euphoria in the market because looking at the like the silver companies you've mentioned, I, I talked to a few the last ten days, and they've been like they. They, they drowned in capital, like meaning like when they had a financing open, investors just threw money at them. But, but you know, it was like looking at the silver price. And as you mentioned, like sentiment has come down again. Was that just a stimulus trade? No, I don't. I, first off, I think people uh, misunderstood uh, China's uh, stimulus, right? So uh, uh, China is transforming uh, its economy from, you know, export oriented to more you know, a consumption oriented. So uh, this this stimulus can be very, very profound. I, I see they have, um, you know, cash for clunkers. <laughs> they have a uh, cash for old fridge, old TV, those kind of things. Basically, the idea is to um, uh, to stabilize the consumer's uh, sentiment. So, uh, but, but, uh, but again, you know, China is a very, very big market. Okay, the, the, the manufacturer base is so big. So it's very hard just to use one, you know, one punch to see what exactly outcome. You can always see different angle from all the different angles. You can get whatever you want if you're bullish or bearish. But I think it's, they're, they're doing fine uh, from what I hear. And uh, the, the commodity demand is there. So if you look at the silver premium in China, it's still very, very high. And gold actually premium vanish. Gold become discount. So basically, Chinese uh, investors are selling out their gold. And they are still like like silver. Absolutely. Is it because silver is just cheaper? You 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 mentioned it earlier, and I've I've read a few hey. comments below our videos. Like, oh, gold is too expensive. I'm buying silver now. Is that one of the reasons? Exactly, exactly. But then you look have to be careful. Those latecomers come in. They always uh, shake the tree event, right? So people just think oh, silver is cheap and then piling into silver. They always come in to shake you off, and then before it really takes off. So for long term investors, you always be patient, uh, looking for opportunities, and you know to take take advantage of the market. Oh, 100%. 100%. And, and one of those opportunities is the Chinese stimulus package. Maybe you can break it down for us a little bit. As you said, it is a bit, bit, bit misunderstood. And I'm still struggling to find a really good overview of like what the, what the money is being spent on, where that stimulus is flowing. And we've talked about uh, like the impact of uh, like solar technology. And you, you showed us a chart last time about how much silver might will be used in solar panels. Like, is that Chinese stimulus package, is, is that geared towards like new technologies like solar as well? And are we going to see an impact there? Yeah, there, there will be portion of them will be uh, on, this, on the new technology, like uh, EV, like, uh, you know, uh, solar panel. Solar panel has been going up steadily, about 30% a year in China. So uh, there is a possibility that uh, new building, they would require some solar installations on, on the rooftop. It's possible, very possible. And also, uh, solar is uh, spreading across the world. Uh, maybe uh, I think I have the presentation in my um, uh, recent um, uh, metal investment forum. So China is taking about more than fifty percent of all the solar panel around the world, right? So the the next uh, tiny little bit is uh, United States and Europe and and the rest of the country. But if you see the in developing countries, it's exploding uh, the solar because they don't have the power infrastructure. You have to. 
appreciate from the point of view people do not have a power <laughs> and suddenly have power you have a solar panel you have a battery you have a life so uh those are spreading you know they're spreading and and I, I think those are really organic, you know, just people just spontaneous because the, the solar uh, is the cheapest way to produce power. The problem is it's not, uh, you know, 24 hours. So you need a battery. Battery is getting cheaper. Solar panel is getting cheaper. So at a certain point, technology just take off, right? So it's getting to that point. So that, that uh, that's another thing to watch uh, for next year. Oh, 100%. Look, I think we all know that that trend is intact. Um, but there hasn't been any additional fuel added to like the, the PV, the photovoltaic fire per se, right? Have there been any like legisl uh, legislatory changes um, at all, like in terms of solar? Because as you pointed out, that was one of the biggest driver for silver demand. Right. Uh, from regulatory, I don't see too many specifically. It's just infrastructure spending. That's what we're including solar, right? Uh, China is uh, rapidly building, uh, to try to make uh, energy uh, self resilient, you know, resilient, self sufficient, right? So they're building a lot of, lot of solar, a lot of nuclear, including wind. So they basically they want to import as little oil as possible. <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate goal, uh, because, uh, you know, there's a fear. Uh, uh, in China, that uh, if it's hypothetically a, way, a war break out with the United States, uh, the import route can be cut. Right? So that's part of the reason that they're pushing very hard. So I, I see a lot more coming. No. no, fair enough. Maybe one last question on the silver topic. Like I, we, we spoke about it last time as well, but I'm curious, like have you seen Western banks in pre increase their price targets for silver? Like we've seen them all increase their price targets for gold, like $3,000 and, and even more sometimes. Um, so I'm curious, like have you seen similar adjustments for silver and like what is the sort of the sentiment towards silver by the bigger Western banks here? Yeah, and you saw Citibank actually increase their, their target. Uh, Citibank has been the first major bank to be bullish. Uh, my take is um, when all the banks start bullish, actually it's more <laughs> profit taking time because you're ahead of the game. Uh, you're ahead of the crowd. And then and when everybody in, you should put a timer there. When everybody's on board within a year or two, you should take you know, significant money. That's how I make my money in the cycle. You have to watch out that. But right now, Citibank is on board, but there could be more and more coming. Uh, and the silver is obvious. You know, we were talking about, you know, copper could be deficit next year, could be. Silver is in deficit for a few years. So that, that's a very different topic. So uh, it's pretty obvious. There are so many things going behind silver. I see silver potentially any time. It's very hard to predict exactly. It could be this week. Silver just take off, and then you wake up in the morning, and silver is up so much. Just like before, you saw this. I, I gave the chart of silver. You see silver rising can very, very fast. Once it break out, it can rise very, very fast. So I'm still very hopeful. I'm very, um, you know, I'm happy to see silver just at the breakout point. You know, 30, right now, 32, 32 and a half. Uh, and the consolidate here, the you know the longer it lasts, uh, the the the, high, the harder the breakout is. So um, we'll see. A hundred percent. And by the way, like the city city bank raised their uh, price target for silver to forty dollars, and they they were at thirty eight, which is already higher. And now they've raised it to forty, just about ten days ago or so, um, which is interesting to see, of course. Um, on on the Chinese stimulus package, like let's maybe take one step back here, like in in, in mm -hmm. terms of commodities. We of course we've we've discussed silver focused uh, stimulus package, but what what does it mean for the broader range of commodities? You, you mentioned copper, um, maybe supply deficit next year, but uh, what what does the Chinese stimulus package also mean for other commodities here, Chen? Right, this the stimulus package would have an impact for for the commodity. I think um, mostly it could be the copper, it could be steel and uh, a few other commodity but i feel the the most driven uh, <clears throat> the commodity the, the price driven is the, by the true demand around the world right stimulus help a little bit <coughs> you can change the sentiment but the, really what help commodity is the demand around the world uh, right now there's a war going on in around the world a war war right people are calling world war three potentially those I have a strong demand for commodity. You see, just 
imagine the bullet as the copper right uh uh shell and then they are making drone and drone use all the different material drone has become a key part and then their even robot is coming to play so also those are the demand competing with the chinese uh you know chinese stimulus so my point is chinese stimulus will increase commodity demand but it don't for investors, we, you know, we should look beyond the, the stimulus because stimulus is uh, it's just one time, one time punch. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, how how does it look around, or what's the state of the Chinese economy? Like, when people hear stimulus package, everybody thinks, oh, the, the economy is hurting; it can't be doing so well. Um, what, what's the true state of the Chinese economy, Chen? Because I feel like it is being misunderstood in the West to a degree. Right. Uh, Chinese de- economy, as I said, in the past uh, six to 12 months, it's been terrible and very, very bad uh, because they made the crucial mistake in, in the COVID policy. Okay. So when these uh, Chinese, uh, you know, country and autocracy, right, autocracy, when they make a mistake, they make a huge mistake. Uh, the biggest mistake they made was uh, they didn't give any support to the small business or citizen during the COVID. That's the biggest mistake. She was so proud of his accomplishment of COVID. He said, I don't need, you know, United States, you need, you, you, Europe, you need to shower people with money. I don't need it. Look how good I am. But that was a crucial, crucial mistake. I, I, w- I was in China a few months ago. I was talking to all the small business owners. They were miserable. Think about two or three years with no income, you have to pay rent. So they're all bankrupt. They, that's the biggest problem. Uh, with, with Chinese economy. So just like the consumer sentiment, it just after COVID, people thought there will be a outpour of uh, growth and uh, consumption, just like it was. No, it's just opposite because China, <laughs> people are sick and tired of a lockdown. And they have no, a lot of people have no income, small business, they all went bankrupt, right? And I met them, other people, they became a uh, Uber driver <laughs> in China, they are taxi driver. Because they, they close down their business. They say, okay, I just use this to make a living because, you know, sometimes a lot of people mid age, they can't find a new job anymore. So they just become taxi driver. I met a lot of those like that. They tell me their story and uh, that was the problem. So it's a consumer sentiment problem. So. If the stimulus is huge enough, I see, I heard there's more coming. So it's like 10 trillion yuan is much higher than uh, 2008. They could shift the sentiment. Also, as my, and I said before, time also will shift because you just went through the drama, you went through that. You're very hesitant to spend money. But I, when the time comes, when, when, when things become normal, the sentiment can improve as well. So I think it's more a sentimental problem than, uh, uh, than, than, you know, than really uh, a crisis. Of course, Chinese housing market is a big bubble. That's in between that. <laughs> so, so, but, but, but that, that, that's my general, my take. So I think the the pass of time, each month's pass, people getting back to normal and the stimulus could help the consumer sentiment significantly, actually. Yeah, because a big package of, or a big part of the, the stimulus package is flowing into real estate. And because uh, the Chinese economy has always been, or ha- in the past has been heavily reliant on real estate and price increases on real estate and, P- and Chinese buying real estate sort of as an investment. They didn't buy gold or silver in the past. It was mostly real estate, like concrete gold, right? But th- but that's <laughs> shifting because the because because there's a, a disbelief, like they don't trust the market anymore. And that's exactly that sentiment you're talking about. Is that correct? Yeah, they've been buying uh, apartment, uh, empty apartment for, for decades. So they finally people realized last year that uh, that was wrong. So people are piling to gold. I discussed that. But this year they seem to change. They are selling down gold again. I think it's a mistake. There's a little bit of stabilization of apartment price. Uh, some areas have a small increase recently. So, I, I, but I think it's um, they will learn their lesson. <laughs> they will find out actually gold is uh, it's a best investment. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I, what, I'm keep you know I keep close eye on the gold and silver premium. Um, because a lot of people actually from China, they're telling me, oh, they think that gold is more too expensive, stock market is too cheap, and housing market too cheap. So that's why they're selling gold, okay? But, you know, they may not true, right? <laughs> they may, may not material. But the good thing is that they like silver. They think silver is cheap. So, uh, and historically, silver 
is used as money, right? Bank in China means uh, silver. It's created for silver. So silver as a currency is um, is uh, in Chinese culture. And then Russia recently introduced uh, silver as potentially reserve. I think the chance, there's a very decent chance that China could introduce silver as reserve again. Because he is, uh, he's a big, 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 you know, he think he's, he's, he's a Caesar, he's a, you know, he's whatever. So, and historically, Chinese, if you look at Chinese history, uh, when China, China was a strong, prosper, silver always currency. So maybe he, he wants to introduce, it's possible. That's a, only, a, that's a wild card. I, I do not know because I'm trying to get the import export data on silver, but it's very complicated because you import those byproducts or into China and all the other very complicated. Um, so that's hard to say. But I, I study other another material we can talk a little bit is the platinum. Actually, it's very clear pattern that China is accumulating platinum below a solid. So that has been my trade, very successful trade in the past two years. So silver is hard to say, but it could happen. Yeah. If that happened, if that happened, that will instantly silver will be more than fifty. Trust me. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, that that's something I'm, I'm looking at. But if he wants to announce, he will secretly accumulate silver for for a few, at least for a few months, if not a year. No. So, we haven't seen a lot of news come out of China that they're accumulating silver, gold. Yes, I think that's the obvious story. But silver, we haven't really heard much about it. Maybe that's the whole point, right? Um, yeah. But uh, on, the, on the point of consumer sentiment, real quick, uh, funny enough, on this channel, we've discussed Chinese consumer sentiment a couple of times in the last 10 days, and uh, the savings rate of the Chinese consumer is right around 50%, while in the US, it's about 45 to 5%, so much, much lower in the US than in China. And uh, is the goal, or she's goal, like to, to get the Chinese people to spend their money again? Like 50% is a really high savings rate. Oh, yeah, extraordinary high saving rate. A lot of people uh, in China I talk to, they don't understand. United States, there are people living paycheck to paycheck. But in Chinese culture, people, you need to save at least, uh, you know, five years of, you know, down, down day. You know, if uh, you have problem, trouble in, in a few years, you, you can survive. So uh, I think those, so that's why I'm saying it's a sentiment issue. So China, okay, the uh, the the central government is very wealthy because a huge forex and three trillion, right? They, have, they put a, have a lot of gold. Uh, the consumer is very wealthy. They have a lot of savings in the bank. The problem is the middle is the uh, is the local government. Local government they really rely on the housing. They rely on selling the, the land for their income. They are in trouble. Those that's a, that that's that's real. So I see there are some support of the. A reconstruction of the loan of the local government that could help. That could help, and also China. One of the huge problem that actually lead to the uh, copper. Copper about to break out. Remember that <laughs> at that time I saw copper break out. I saw silver could break out, but the copper actually came down all the way down to four dollars uh, because of China uh, set a red line right uh, uh, around mid year this year. They basically said. Any province in China, if you are dead over GDP 100%, you are killed. Okay, you cannot spend any more money. So there is about the nine province or 10 fall into that category. You are dead over GDP over 100%. So there's no more infrastructure, no more spending. So that actually really crushed the sentiment. That's why the copper broke out with the false broke out. That's actually pull down silver, pull down many. There's a lot of reason behind that. Uh, also, iron ore was hitting new low on that time, way below $100. So that that was, uh, that's a problem for China. It's a middle layer, the local government. So, but anyway, they, they've been, the cut already been cut. Okay, so we already seen the wars. When they seen all these uh, uh, infrastructure by the local province had to stop. They were forced to stop because they cannot spend anymore. So, but it's still, you see, from Western standard, if the debt over GDP a hundred percent, it's not a very, uh, you know, aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of countries way over a hundred percent. So, but but still, that's that was the red line in China. Your debt cannot be over GDP by one hundred percent. Uh, that seems to be changing uh, everywhere in the world now. So Germany is at sixty nine percent, I believe. The U.S. is at one hundred and thirty five. Japan at two fifty plus. So uh, we're, the world is over indebted anyway. I think that's a very different topic for another day. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like 
you, you, you brought up copper. I think we quickly need to talk about copper price developments. Of course, it has reacted positively to the Chinese stimulus package and overall sentiment that recession or even a global recession might not happen. So I'm curious, like, A, what's your, what's your take on the economy? Like, are we, did we get rid of the recession fears? Are we done with that? And where, where do you see copper trending? Like, what, what's your copper price prediction here? Oh, I, I'm still quite quite bullish on copper for the long run. But the, on the stimulus, there's a huge run of the copper stock. I've been selling my copper stock. Right? Actually, I, I sold most of my copper stock because it was just run so hard. You know, it's around 20% in a day. I mean, great, you know, uh, I'm selling. Um, but, and, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, that's my new side. I'm, I'm buying and selling. I always uh, take advantage of those kind of, uh, uh, you know, Euphoria, you know, when market got super excited, I, I tend to sell some. And then when, like these days, the market pull back, I, I'm looking to buy. I'm actually looking to buy back my my copper stock. I'm still looking at this week. It can be very volatile, so maybe there's opportunity for me to buy back at a low, much lower price. Uh, I'm bullish on copper. I, I think that the energy cons- transition is real. It's real. You know, people, you need to imagine you know, not just China stimulus. You look at the Somewhere in Africa, for example, uh, they, there's no uh, gasoline infrastructure. People just walking around, maybe biking around the, the local village, right? So th- finally, they have the opportunity to have a solar panel. Maybe they have an electrical bike or maybe have an EV. They can drive around now, right? So, th- so there is a change of lifestyle. There are still a lot of people in those poor countries or third world country uh, that do not have infrastructure, do not have electricity, they want a better life. It just people, you cannot stop that, right? People want a better life. And then for that, you need a lot of copper. That's a period. Oh, 100%. And uh, the China, or China is deeply ingrained with the African countries as well. So seeing cheap BYD vehicles are so driving around in rural Africa, um, it, it is is not uncommon. And the other thing, like maybe as an anecdote, in, cell phone infrastructure is way better in in African countries than it is, for example, in Germany. Like it's it's ridiculous. But uh, they don't have landlines, so they all invested in like mobile infrastructure, right? So they're way ahead. Yeah. Like not yeah. like in Germany. Like and I see a similar problem. Let's let's call it for the EV rollout, for example. Like we've got great yeah. gas station yeah. infrastructure, which is let's call it antiquated. Right, mm-hmm. and uh, we don't have any new uh, EV infrastructure, which is now probably what is being installed in the in, in African countries as a as an analog to the cell phone towers. I, I would call it that, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So the, the growth has been phenomenal. I mean, I don't have some African data. I have a Brazil data. One year went up a thousand percent the BYD export to okay. to Brazil from China, China the EV, and then those require copper. That's you know you re- require electrical generation, right? It doesn't just come out from thin air. So those are required. And then also for the AI angle, you think about AI is the hottest race around the world in. In term, even in terms of military, in terms of national security, this is extremely important. And then you need power, right? power, nuclear and solar. That's uh, people are looking. Well, some people look at nu- some company look at nuclear, but it takes a while to permit. But some somewhere, you know, they require, you know, the, uh, it, you know, the solar is the uh, easiest to get permit and then very quick to get turned on. So. That's that's different avenue we're looking at, and then United States needs a lot of power. Same for Europe. Europe, European, the power is really, really problem. It's become your uh, biggest uh, disadvantage right now because the electricity is so expensive. The industry, it's Germany, whatever, it's it in, in trouble. Yeah, they're not very competitive around the world that because of the energy cost. Oh, 100%. No, it's uh, it's actually quite bad out here. Like my personal power cost is about 37, 38 cents a kilowatt hour. I know the industry is paying a bit less, but still, like overall, a like, global comparison, we're one of the most expensive countries for power uh, by far. Yeah, so yeah. not competitive. Um, Chen, you brought up platinum earlier, and we never discuss platinum. And I often get some comments in the uh, on YouTube below. It's like, oh, what about palladium and platinum? Um, ma- ma- can you make a case for platinum? Like you said, you've been trading it for a couple of years. Like, what's the state of platinum right now, and what's the opportunity here? Right, platinum is a, a basic concentration of two countries: one South Africa, one is Russia, right? So, uh, and then platinum is could is borderly used, not automobile, not just automobile, but also in 
other sector around all the industry. It's in deficit and uh, it's below mining costs. So South Africa has been using the byproduct to subsidize the platinum. If the platinum were just straight mine platinum, they cannot be below a thousand dollar because you know platinum is harder to mine than gold. Oh, in system of at least fifteen. 1500, but they're using other, they're using, before rhodium was very hard, they used rhodium. Now I heard this chrome was uh, hard. I mean, they use chrome to subsidize, to keep the mine running. But eventually things can, will happen. You know, the, you run out of the byproduct support. The platinum is trading at the below mining costs. That's what I'm saying. And I see very consistent pattern from China. Every month, when the platinum, when platinum price is below a thousand, there's a strong buying. Uh, part of the reason, as I said, is that China doesn't produce platinum, or produce very, very little platinum. Most platinum are import. You know, China always has a fear that the traditional, you know, that the import could be cut off. Of, of course, they can get, get it from Russia, but Russia is the second, right? The biggest is from Africa. So China has been accumulating platinum. You see that very clearly from trade data. They're secretly building a platinum reserve. So every time below a thousand, China has been buying, accumulating. So I'm buying. So above thousand, I'm selling some. I keep a small position just in case it really breaks out. The secondary is about palladium. Palladium is used automobile, mostly automobile. And then you know platinum and palladium can switch to each other. I switch. You can you can switch from platinum to palladium, uh, one to one. So. Uh, Palladium has been trading a discount to platinum, now suddenly trading a premium. So actually very positive for platinum. But on that, why are you trading a premium? Because the United States want to ban the palladium from Russia. Uh, pl palladium is just opposite. Largest is from Russia and then South Africa and around, around the world. So, but if they ban, if we ban the, uh, the palladium from Russia, the palladium price will go to the moon because um, the shortage. The same thing for uranium, right? We ban the, the uranium from Russia, you know, the uranium price went up. So uh, Russia has been a very important source for the world for the uh, palladium. So <laughs> so right now, palladium is uh, you're trading a pr premium to platinum. Uh, I'm not very bullish on palladium because it's more politically driven, so I, I don't trade that much. I used to trade when you know automobile was taking off. I, I trade palladium from 900 to 2000. Uh, but now I'm I'm I don't I'm, I don't I'm neutral on palladium, but I'm bullish on platinum. I've been trading that since up and down. Chen, Chen, what metal isn't China stockpiling right now? It sounds like they're stockpiling everything. So is there anything they're completely not interested in? It's a bit of a cheeky question, of course, but uh, right, it seems like they're right. they're they're stockpiling, as you said, like copper, silver, gold, uh, platinum, palladium. Like it seems like they're they're really squeezing the worldwide markets when it comes to those metals. It's like, maybe it's like we need to zoom out a little bit. We need to understand, like, is there is there something bigger at play? Like, I'm really just trying to think, like, okay, like, based on what you mentioned, like, they're stockpiling everything, but what, what's the strategy here? They are uh, stockpiling the most is the, the this material China don't produce. Industrial material that China need import, they stockpile the most. Uh, this, they have oil reserve, they have been expanding that. Uh, they have, um, uh, you know, the uh, copper, they, they're building an inventory. Uh, the pl platinum, I'm sure palladium probably have some uh, uh, inventory too. Maybe something China produce a lot, like zinc, maybe they don't, right? Zinc and lead, China has a domestic production. So uh, China import a lot, platinum almost 100% import. So that's the high priority. Palladium probably high priority. Uh, copper probably high priority. So that you can see from there. So whatever you can see from uh, Xi's point of view, he said, what if United States cut off my trade route, right? So and they, he want to have, you know, spare. He want to have some reserve in, in hand. So that's that's basically it is. Yeah, M makes a lot of sense. Like, why wouldn't you do it if you don't produce it yourself? Like, but why be dependent on others when you can have a, a stockpile that you can sort of work through, right? Make, makes and a lot cheaply, of sense. And cheaply, Chinese are very good trader. They, they, they like to buy cheap. So when they accumulate the copper, copper was around four, they accumulate a lot of copper. Platinum, they, whenever below a thousand, they start accumulating. So they, they're, they're kind of a cheap trader. <laughs> they buy anything that's, that's cheap, that's below mining costs. That's even better. Oh, that's even better. Absolutely. No, that, that is extremely smart. Chen, we, we, we're super positive, of course, on the in 
pretty much all the commodities complex here in, in general, like what we've discussed. But did, do you see any risks? Like what could put a damper on things? Like what could like have silver break even break down further, like maybe to retreat to $25 or copper come back to 380 Like what are some potential risks here that you see? You're right. Uh, that could be, uh, well, 2008, right? Uh, if you see uh, potentially what happening, if it happened to a big financial crisis around the world, uh, the world economy engine stopped, that will be a huge, huge negative uh, to all the com industrial commodity. Remember in 2020, uh, oil went negative, right? So, um, those things that this can happen this uh wti when that case, should i should say that the brand number the wti on that particular day so if if there's a crisis like uh, covid or some i hope not right so or something financial crisis they will go down hard but it will be very beneficial to gold <laughs> come you know that what happened to gold when they come out of this crisis this kind of crisis a hundred percent. Like we haven't really talked about gold, but uh, Chen, do you have do you have a price target for gold? Gold at three thousand this year <laughs> could be very 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 likely. It could be even this week. I mean, because right now it's really uh, gold. You can see uh, gold really controlled by those um, Western trader now. Before it was mostly buying from from the East, from China, from India, buying. Now, uh, yeah, I, I was surprised those Chinese uh, investors abandoned go so quickly. I think they're wrong, but we'll see. But right now, it's really Western, you know, ETF. You can see the inflow of ETF, mostly a Western. Yeah. And people are start waking up, waking up for gold. Not in Europe. We're selling. I haven't seen the October numbers. I'll probably have to check in a few days. But the Europeans have yeah. sold in September. So it yeah. um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, to be honest. But uh, I, I get it um, in terms of maybe it's too expensive. I have no idea. But uh, Chen, maybe one last question here to sum it all up. And I really like asking this as a summary question. If you had to invest a million dollars right now, how would you allocate that money? Oh, right now. Right now, well, I, I would have some cash on time because we have an election coming and then Fed decision coming can be very volatile in the, in the next uh, month or so. And uh, I would, you know, I, I re just for the record, pattern below a thousand again, I'm buying. <laughs> it was uh, way over a thousand I have been so selling. Uh, so now here I'm buying, it, it seems to be reasonable cheap and it's like a, I, as you said, it's like silver twenty five dollar. <laughs> so I don't think silver will go that low. Uh, but anything can happen, right? In the investment world, you have to be careful. Uh, the what crazy thing can happen with the election, with a lot of things. Um, uh, so I hope we know who the president is in, in a week or so. So if not, we, we, <laughs> there's some trouble. So you should have some uh, dry powder on the side. But besides that, I'm, I'm heavily, still heavily invested in mining company in the producer. So uh, I think this bull market, a uh, lot of gold mining company, they can make as much as their market cap in this bull market, in this round, easily. You have to put this bull market last for a couple of years, right? So because they, they, they earning power is so great, uh, so great. Uh, so there, there's a lot of company will have a lot of winners coming out, uh, like every uh, bull cycle. And then you will remember for a long time. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, there, you know, quite a few of my juniors are doing well. So I'm very happy about that. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I lost you. I cannot hear oh, you. Hold oh, on. Chen, like, uh, sorry, I was coughing earlier, so I muted myself. <laughs> but uh, Chen, like, you know, it's, it's been tremendous having you on the channel. I really appreciate your time. Um, where can we follow your work? It's been extremely insightful, of course. Oh, thank you. Uh, Chenpix.com is my website. I write a newsletter about what I'm doing, my trading. I mostly manage my family for my family. So it has been, you know, kind of, so far so good <laughs> with some uh, with some successes and um, some some are pretty big. So I'm I'm pretty happy having a good year. Hope this continues.
Oh, fantastic. No, Chen, really appreciate it. Of course, uh, I mentioned it while I was muted. Of course, nobody heard what I said, but uh, we love your deep insights into the Chinese market and Chinese economy. Like, we, we don't get to discuss those too often here. We don't get those uh, or that depth of, of detail and knowledge. So I really appreciate it, Chen. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll have you back on very soon again. Uh, thank you, Kai. Glad to be everybody here. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning. I hope you enjoyed this discussion here with Chen Lin. As I said, like you, I don't think you'll get deeper insight into the knowledge of the Chinese market than from him. So make sure you use that knowledge. Go follow him at ChenPicks.com. And of course, if you haven't done so, a free way to support our work here at Soar Financial is just to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously. We do appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't registered, make sure to sign up for Deutsche Goldmesse November 21st and 22nd in Frankfurt. DeutscheGoldmesse.com or GermanGoldShow.com. It's free for investors to attend. We'll have six fantastic keynotes. And I have to get Chen on ne uh, next May as well. Chen, you got to come out to Frankfurt um, ne next May. We, we got to get you on, Chen, okay? You got to come out, promise? Okay. Got you. Okay, you're on record, Chen, and uh, Chen, Chen is coming out, but uh, so should you. So I've si sign up. We'll have some fantastic companies joining us, and uh, we really appreciate the support of the Clear Commodity Network at clearcommodity.net for syndicating our podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with lots more here on Sword Financial.